Oh, well, so William Show. Mr. Speaker, my colleague Calvin Davis has already indicated to the House our position with regarding these bills, uh, returning offenders management and information drug and alcohol testing amendment bill, the public safety public protection orders drug and alcohol testing amendment bill, the sentencing drug and alcohol testing amendment bill, the parole drug and alcohol testing amendment bill, the bail drug and alcohol testing amendment bill, and the drug and alcohol testing of community-based offenders and Bailey's legislation bill. And so I don't resolve from the position that uh, Calvin Davis had put forward. I do want to start my remarks by referencing what Jonathan Young said earlier in his contribution when he says that I think it was an appeal that all of our communities need to live by the law. And I'm paraphrasing what he may have said. And I don't think there's anyone in this House that disagrees with that. But I have to then say what Penny Henare said is something that this House needs to consider when we are laying down legislation with the intention of, of, pro of preventing people from recidivism. And the reality is, sir, what we're giving new powers to uh, the police, to the corrections department, to be able to impose bail conditions on drugs and alcohol on offenders that have been released. But here's my concern. Alcohol is freely available. Alcohol is freely available throughout our country. In some communities, such as mine, despite efforts of the community to say no more outlets, the rules that have been, that govern uh, outlets and the sale of alcohol, rules that were passed by this government, doesn't prevent the community from stopping new alcohol outlets in our community. And so, sir, there's a dilemma here. On the one hand, we're saying that we don't want released offenders to be, uh, to, to continue with their, with the, with the alcohol consumption and the drug consumption. But on the other hand, we make these things so readily available out on the streets in the community. And that's almost saying to a bull, here's the red flag, don't run after it. And so we, we, we've got to look broader than simply saying, this is going to address recidivism. And yes, I, I note the report says that um, these bail conditions are very effective in the United States, but then you've got to consider the type of society the United States is like. I've seen people on the streets of Los Angeles walking backwards, walking all over. Um, and when you ask somebody there, what's that person doing? And they say they're on some kind of drug. And, and, and so I think if we're generally sincere about ensuring that people, prisoners released and on parole conditions, then we've got to also have some thought about ensuring that these things that we're wanting to prevent these parolees from accessing are not so readily available in the community. You know, uh, at least we've been able to define uh, the controlled drugs, but I, I think there's a debate that we've still got to have about ensuring that these release prisoners do not end up returning to prison because of their um, inability to control their desires with alcohol and drugs. Um, so I want to say there is a, there is a woman um, who is in prison at the moment. Her name is Vicky Letelli, who was imprisoned in March of this year um, for fraud. And she is serving a three and a half year term. My colleague, Louisa Wall, has been engaging with the Corrections Department and with the, the Parole Board to implore to that group about releasing this woman 
so that she can be with her family. This woman, Vicky Letele, has been diagnosed with a terminal disease, cancer of the stomach. And I raise this issue, sir, because we are given the parole board some significant powers to make decisions on when they can uh, search uh, these parolees. And I'm saying that I think we've got to be very, very careful with the kinds of powers that we give, unfettered powers, that we give to some sectors of our, of our public service. And with Vicky Letele, I would have thought it was just plain simple. A woman is in her twilight hour, she is dying. Her dying wish is to be with her children and to be surrounded by her families. The corrections and the parole board says that she should remain in prison because that's where she can get the medical care in the hospital prison. And the family is saying, well, she's dying. Is it not better to save taxpayers' money and release her and have her spend time with her family and with her children? And, and, and I just think, sir, it is bizarre, and I'm imploring to the minister, to the prime minister, to members of that cabinet, given that we're discussing these powers, they have the power to release this woman if they so want it and I'm imploring to the Minister of Corrections and the Prime Minister that they should do so. These are the dying days of Vicky Letele, and surely she deserves to be released so that she can spend her dying days and hours with her children and with her family. And, and sir, because our politicians, our ministers, this is not have the ability to listen and to observe what's happening on the ground. Yeah, I sometimes that. think that the parole board do not have their eyes and ears closer to the ground because that's the concern that I raised today. And it was a concern, sir, that was also um, discussed by the select committee. And I note in the report they say that the bill may engage the right under section 21 of the Bill of Rights Act 1990 to be secure against unreasonable search of seizure. And that the committee considered that because the drug and alcohol testing had implications for human rights, drug and alcohol traditions for Baileys might be more appropriately imposed by a judicial officer rather than a registrar. I raise the point, sir, that we're giving these significant powers to certain parts of our public service and who may, the experience that we've had, sir, the experience that we've had is they are often disconnected with the realities of what's happening in the community. So again, I want to put that on the record that tonight, this week, the Minister of Corrections, the Prime Minister, Ministers of the Cabinet can do a good thing, can do the right thing and support what my colleague Louisa Wall is asking their corrections in the parole board, but I say they should just simply release Vicky Letele and have her spend her dying days and hours with her children. That's the right thing to do. It's a good thing to do. I call